Department. First, we found out from a press conference that you had filed an ethics complaint against the uh, police chief. Next, we read in the newspaper that the charges against Chief Press were dropped by a unanimous ruling of the Ethics Commission. Then we read in the paper that you had a clandestine meeting with some of the police officers where you stated, and I quote, I was told that somebody could get hurt, and with weapons and everybody's tensions running high, somebody might lose their temper, end quote. Since you don't communicate with the council mayor, we don't know if we should be ready standing in here to call the state militia or consider disbanding the police department or what. I think the citizens of Fairhope deserve it a heck of a lot better than this. And if necessary, the council will issue subpoenas to all concerned to get to the bottom of it. And my question to you is, what is the status of this situation with the police force? Uh, Lisa and I met this morning, and we are going to ask Paul Myrick to get some information. But I was put on notice by two officers. She was put on notice by one officer. And I take it very seriously when somebody says somebody might get hurt. And I'm not going to mention names, but, uh, you know, that was brought to me and two witnesses saw it. And also the city treasurer, I mean, city clerk saw it. And I don't take too kindly if somebody, I don't know whether it's just a matter of difference of opinion. Uh, as far as the meeting at the fire station, they asked me to come. Because I had uh, the first go around over a year ago, when we had three complaints filed against the chief. Um, that one had almost 20 some officers come uh, complaining of one sort or another. Um, and that ended up with a written reprimand of the chief. And uh, this go around, uh, there was some other emotions. And like you say, that uh, I plan to meet with the council, um, Lonnie and, and Dan Sinkowski at least. I think he's chairman of the police and go over the issues that I know of and get some direction. Well, I wish we had heard about it before and I have to read it in the paper. As far as what? That there's some issues going on. I mean, I would have hoped that you would have met with Dan and Lonnie prior to it being advertised all in the paper that there's something, that there's an issue. Well, there again, I didn't put it in the paper. I was asked, uh, uh, I was called by a reporter and I'm not going to, and the reporter asked me a question and I answered the, the, uh, what he asked and I told him why and there was some things brought up about management and I didn't listen to it and I said that's not <coughs> what we're here about, I want to know about the working conditions and that's it. Well my, my concern is, is that, uh, and there again, uh, I have not had any personal communication with you there's a difference between personality issues that, that you were quoted as having said. Now, whether you said it or not, I don't know, but that's what there were personality issues. That's one thing. But when you talk about, or when one talks about a hostile work environment, that's a dangerous situation. I mean, that's totally different. And since you have had meetings with the police department, uh, representatives of the police department, are we talking about personal personality issues or are we talking about a serious hazardous work environment where people can get injured and if so then 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 I don't think I, I think we need to know something uh, we need to know what's going on and uh, and apparently you've met with these people I don't know what their complaints are and you haven't shared those complaints and I think that uh, in, in to give the citizens the confidence that they have, have to have in our police and fire department, uh, we, we need to resolve these things. Are they personality issues because somebody doesn't like a management style? Or are we talking about dangerous situation where somebody's going to get injured? Well, I we don't know. Them, that was the first time they brought all that up this last time. And that's the reason I've been spending time to figure out, do some research and do a little independent uh, study so I can meet with the council and give you what I know and let you hear firsthand once we get involved with it. But to me to say it is more personality, because I think a lot of it is personality, um, but I really did get concerned when somebody in the hallway stops me and more or less points his finger at me and says, listen, I brought this other officer over here with me that he's my witness and says that somebody might get hurt. Now, I take that very seriously, 
and I just well, wrote did it. Did you there. follow up on that? Did you I, did you ask anybody <clears throat> to look at it? Did you say we did? Hey, uh, and know, then I went to I went to uh, HR, okay. and then HR said she had uh, an issue, and so right after that I called our attorney in Mobile to get some advice, and I'm going to be meeting with him <coughs> to get some advice how to deal with this. So if there is an issue, we're going to research it and have somebody that's independent because with all the friction going on, I don't want to be over there. I don't think the staff person to find out if what really is the bottom line. If it's just personality issues. I mean, that's if the chief wants somebody to stand on the on the corner out there all day long, that's his prerogative to do. But if there's something else, then we as elected officials need to know. Well, yeah, we would yeah, like to. We, we, excuse me. Yeah. We would like to know because the ethics, based on the evidence presented, the commission found there currently is, exists insufficient facts. The whole chief press has violated the Alabama ethics law and further moved that the case be closed. Are we dealing with something like this? Uh, uh, no, about that personality was issues that, that will eventually be issue. dismissed. <clears throat> there again, the meeting was called. I was asked to be there. And I went to hear what their concern was to let them vent. Um, <clears throat> and I'm looking into their allegations. And when, when and was the meeting, by the way? I don't know. It was last two two weeks. Weeks. about two weeks ago. Two weeks. <clears throat> but. Um, I did have another meeting with uh, Lisa this morning, and we're working to get Paul Monarch. And when I do get that meeting, I was going to call on Dan Stankowski to be the liaison there. But we hadn't got to that point yet. Okay. But if you'd like, I'd like at least two of y'all there. If you, maybe if Lonnie, if you'd like to be, and and Rick uh, or whoever, uh, I was going to ask Dan to be to here. I'll be happy to show okay. up. Now, I would recommend this to. Uh, King Ray, since he's an attorney, I'll step aside and let him go there if he would. That's fine. That. Anything else? You well, I, I feel like I'm beating a dead horse, Mr. Mayor, but I, I, I too am very, very concerned. I'm, I was concerned when the Ethics Commission, or, or when the Ethics Complaint was brought, and one of my concerns was based on nothing more than you decided to hire a private attorney rather than use our city attorney for him. That was one of the things that caused me concern. Another thing that caused me concern was the fact that at the point that after you were already using Mr. Uh, Whetstone, I think Chief Press was using Tut Wynn, and yet you told Tut not to represent Press. And press is certainly a member of the city and, and city administration. I have problems with that. Uh, I have problems when you stand up in front of us and tell that press has violated a 1999 uh, ordinance. And then I go back and read the ordinance, and it doesn't say jack all about how they or who pays the people. I, I have a problem with that. I have a problem. Again, when you say, I don't know anything of, about the way they're being paid, and yet I look at a uh, spreadsheet, and then I see a letter from March of 08 that says, and this is written to a bank, it's signed by you and then Captain Griffiths, and it says, y'all are setting up this police, uh, Friends of the Police Force Authority. And I look back, and it just so happens that it says as of October 24th, 2007, that's what you were going to do. Well, and I look on my spreadsheet, and all of a sudden, that's when the spreadsheet comes forward, and that's when whoever was chief then, I don't remember whether it was uh, Kamalander or who it was, but whoever it was, it started making his detailed payments out of this very same account. You had to know about it, but yet I read in the newspaper that you say that you don't. And that, that, that kind of stuff causes me a problem because it looks like a witch hunt and it looks like what you're trying to do is sow seeds of uh, dissension in the police force. And I've, I have a real problem with that because one of the things, and I commend you for meeting with, with the officers. I think that's a great thing. If, if disgruntled employees come, you should always have an open door and you should meet with them. But that was two weeks ago. 
you haven't talked to a single councilman, you haven't talked to press or Sanders or any of the command at the police force. I have a problem with that. And it just seems to me that, I mean, it's obvious, and I don't think I'm telling 